Good evening, everybody. Just give the music a chance to die down there. Well, here we are. The first ever uh, International Day for People with Disability Art Exhibition. Uh, my name is Chris Barty and I will be your MC for the evening, so apologies for that in advance. Uh, unfortunately, when you work for a non-profit, sometimes you take what you get. Um, just a couple of bits of housekeeping before we get going. Um, so the first thing is just to let you know where the bathroom is, should you require it. It's just in the back corner there on the left, uh, behind the What's New section. So you can check out something on the way, um, but try not to take it into the bathroom, please. Um, and for those of you um, who are wondering what our wonderful camera crew is doing up the back there, uh, tonight's event is actually going to be live streamed uh, and recorded. So um, tonight is being uh, live streamed directly through the City of Subiaco's Facebook page. Um, and so there will be some live streaming and some photography. Um, if anyone is uncomfortable um, about being photographed or, or captured on film, um, just approach um, a staff member from uh, either the City of Subiaco or Mission Australia um, and we will make sure that you are um, not captured. Um, for this evening's event, um, we kindly request that you keep um, all mobile phones off or on silent. Uh, and um, in the event of an emergency, please follow the directions of library staff who will direct you. Um, first of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, uh, introduce and, and welcome all of our special guests uh, this evening who are seated up the front here. But in particular, I'd like to um, welcome and thank um, our 13 artists who I think we can all agree have produced some absolutely stunning pieces of work. Um, to get this evening underway, I'd like to welcome Councillor Rosemary DeVries from the City of Subiaco, who will perform the, an acknowledgement of country. Thank you, Chris. Good evening and welcome. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rosemary de Vries, and as a City of Subiaco councillor, I am the chair of the City's Disability Access and Inclusion Committee. On behalf of the City of Subiaco, I acknowledge the Wajak Noongar people as the trad traditional custodians of the area. We recognise their cultural connection to the land and waterways of Subiaco and their continuing contribution to our city. My warmest welcome, first and foremost, to the 13 artists and their carers. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to honoured guests, Joy Norton, Service Area Manager, Mission Australia, Freeman of the City, former Mayor and member of the City's DAIC, Heather Henderson, fellow DAIC committee members, Claire Malone, Judith Gadero, Lisa Odgers, Chris Barty, our MC this evening, and the person who first approached the city in regard to the exhibition, Ash Odgers, who is also one of the artists whose work is in the exhibition, fellow councillor Rick Powell, Sandy Parsons, panel facilitator, city staff, and visitors to tonight's exhibition. The city is proud to partner with Mission Australia to celebrate 2020 International Day of People with Disability. In a year that has brought unparalleled challenges for all, for those living with disabilities, it has in many ways been even more difficult. This day serves not only to highlight and recognise the talents of people living with disability, it is also a chance to share and give recognition to the work done by organisations such as Mission Australia to support people living with disability. In 2020, their work has been invaluable. We are privileged to gather in this space tonight to celebrate and acknowledge the outstanding achievements and appreciate the talents and skills of people with disabilities in the arts. I'd like to thank the artists for sharing your work with us today. Henry Matisse said that creativity takes courage. Art is often deeply personal and it does take tremendous courage to not only be creative, but moreover, to be willing to share it with the world. As the title of the exhibition, Perseverance, Strength Through the Art, Through Art, suggests, we are all given opportunities for solace, reflection, and connectedness through the arts. Our communities are enriched by the work of artists and their generosity of spirit. 
I am sure in the aftermath of 2020, many artists will express our collective anguish and reinvigorate our strength through their art. We thank you for your courage in sharing tonight and look forward to seeing more work in future. I would also like to thank Mission Australia for their dedication, commitment and understanding of the steps needed to support the artists. Mission Australia have collaborated with the artists to develop the necessary skills to make informed decisions about valuing and selling their artwork. Mission Australia's support in ensuring that people living with disability have access to services, funding and furthermore, the chance to celebrate their passions and talents have been pivotal in bringing this event together tonight. Special thanks also go to Developmental Disability WA for financially supporting this art exhibition as part of International Day of People with Disability celebrations. Through my participation on the DAIC, I have become acutely aware of the city's dedication to supporting people with disability in our community. While each milestone might just seem like a small step, the city is pursuing a more equitable and just world where the needs and passions of all are treated equally. The city is dedicated to working with people with disability in every way possible. Our commitment to further collaboration and initiatives is also ongoing. The work of DAIC is far from done and I look forward to continuing in my role to support further initiatives such as this wonderful art exhibition. It is now my pleasure to introduce Joy Norton, Service Area Manager from Mission Australia, to say a few words. Thank you for that warm introduction. Welcome everybody. I would also like to acknowledge the Wajak Noongar people as the traditional custodians of this land and pay my respects to elders past and present. I'm incredibly honoured to be standing here tonight representing Mission Australia. I'm appreciative of the platform that has been offered to the artists that are very talented, that have offered to showcase their work. Yesterday we celebrated International Day for People with Disability and tonight the celebrations continue as we launch this event. People with disability make valued contributions to the community, workplace and of course the arts. The works of the following talented artists make up this exhibition. Ashley Odgers, Billy Simpson, <laughs> Bonnie Prodenovic, Brittany Plummer, Caroline Wigley, Clinton Carter, David Gould, Jenny McAllister, Julianne Ryan, Lucy Duncan, Martin Cahill, Rodney Stone, and Sandra Yaxley. Very well deserved applause. In our current context, we often look to the arts as a safe haven or a joyous space. We, we like the escape of the arts. We feel that they're liberating. There's freedom in expression and manifesting what, what is a part of the imagination. However, being an artist can come with challenges. The difficulties in finding your audience, having your work seen and embraced. The artists represented in this exhibition are diverse, but they are united through their perseverance. For the people at Mission Australia, the quality of perseverance is one of our core values, and I'm proud to be presenting this exhibition's theme, Perseverance, Strength Through Art. Mission Australia would like to express their incredible gratitude to the city of Subiaco for making this a possibility. We would also like to thank De Developmental Disability WA, DADA, Perth Expo Hire for making this event a reality. I'd like to thank by name from the city of Subiaco, Tina Ackerman, Natalia Shah, Lauren Mills, Kathleen Ridgewell. From the Mission Australia team, Chris Barty, who has worked incredibly to uh, make this event a reality. Courtney DeMello, volunteers, Dean Caddy, Adam Manuel, Vincent Alejandro, Cassandra Lord, and Katie Hannabury. From Dada, Ricky Arnold, Malika McLeod, Perth Expo Hire, also Sandy Parsons and the Centre for Stories, all of which without their support and their assistance and their incredible vision wouldn't have made this event a reality. While I'm honoured to be speaking tonight, all of the people involved have worked tirelessly to make this event come to life. I'd also like to formally introduce Sandy Parsons. Sandy will be hosting our panel discussions this evening. She's passionate about diversity and representation, and these values clearly come to life in her storytelling, 
as does her firm belief that every child should have the opportunity to see themselves accurately presented in the literature and the arts. Sandy is an accomplished writer, with her works being published in Mind Food and Frankie magazine. She is also a contributor to Growing Up Disabled in Australia anthology, and she has won multiple awards. Notably, she is the Scholastic Australia Literacy Champion for 2013, and has won the West Australian School Library Association Joint Library Officer of the Year Award in 2015. Sandy describes herself as a book nerd, as a reader, writer, storyteller, librarian, you'll be at home here, Sandy, cystic fibrosis warrior, transplant recipient, and mother, and we are privileged to have her facilitating our panel discussion. I hope you take the time to enjoy this exhibition, and I hope that it revitalises your spirit of perseverance and strength through art. I'd like to welcome Sandy to the stage. Thank you, Joy, for your warm welcome. Tonight, we're going to hear from four of the exhibition artists, Jenny McAllister, Carolyn Wigley, Julian Ryan, and Bonnie Pradanovic. If they'd like to come up, that would be fabulous. Artists with disability are vital contributors to Australia's arts and culture. They create work that not only stands on its own artistic merit, but at times includes the unique perspectives and lived experience of the artist. Art is a medium that has the power to connect audiences and share experiences that are different from their own. But as in many other areas of society, artists with disability are often underrepresented. Data from the Bureau of Statistics shows that their income from their art is less than their counterparts without a disability, which is why exhibitions that feature artists with a disability are so important. At the heart of any art that features artists, they have a vision. So let's hear from our artists themselves. We'll start with you, Carolyn. What does art mean to you? Art means art is a way for me to express ideas and current thinking, and um, I do this through uh, objects, still life, portraits, and sketches of animals using pencil mainly at the moment or collage, but. It means a lot to me to convey meaning. Thank you. Bonnie, what does art mean to you? Art means to me to have a positive uh, focus and have more creative ideas. Um, I think about art uh, every week and it just gives me a really positive structure for the week to think about what my next project will be. I do travel art a lot, and now that we can't travel, I paint places that I want to go to and see. Yeah. Jenny? Um, art to me is the appreciation for the creativity of people to be able to express themselves. And I just find the beauty in art when I see it hanging on the walls. It just makes me happy. And Julianne? Um, art to me is just expressing all the thoughts that sometimes I can't put into words. And it's also a way of relaxing, almost like a meditation, where I can stop thinking consciously and just pour everything into what I'm making. That leads directly into our next question, which is, how are you connected to your art? Would we like to start with you, Julianne, and we'll come backwards? Um, well, art for me has been something I've always been connected to since I was a little child. It's just been how I've found a way to express myself and it's just something I go to all the time. It's just a, like writing, like speaking. It's just something um, very natural that I go to. <laughs> um, for me, it's just a joyous thing to be able to do and to be able to uh, create something that 
it's then going to be able to give some to someone or as a gift or whatever. Um, just to see things hanging on the wall like, it always makes me feel very happy. If I go to a museum, I love to just ponder for hours and it's just always been a very big part of my life and it always will be, <laughs> yes. Bonnie? Um, art is uh, like a communication style for me. I don't like reading or writing a lot, so I do art to feel useful in a week. <laughs> and um, it's just uh, to get better and better at it each year. It just makes me feel good. <laughs> and lastly, but not least, Carolyn. Art connects me to life, the universe, other people, and to again convey meaning and give opportunity for discussion. And I use techniques with pencil and crayon and other things like photography. So now we're going to hear a little bit more about the artists individually. So, Carolyn, starting with you. You describe yourself as a minimal artist. Can you explain what that means? I've, I've become a minimal artist through refining a process that I needed to do as someone who was a fine artist and did a lot of oil painting and for environmental reasons I no longer do oil painting. I prefer sketching and um, using, using colour in whichever way I can, watercolours. And um, I find that I prefer A4 art journal paper and things like that. And I recycle things like um, old cards, and make new ones, label some jars and make cards out of them and um, other things like that, like Easter foil, the foil from Easter eggs, bunch them up and make them into dresses. <laughs> so I, I'm into recycling what I can and doing, well, whatever small part I can. It's great that you can use art in that way. Bonnie, art is very individual, so what inspires you to make art? Um, I have a, a never done art before I had my disability, so it inspired me to do something with my time when I developed the walking condition that I have, and um, uh, it filled in my time to do, think about something else rather than uh, my health problems, so art gave me something positive to concentrate on. And I also did a lot of travel when I was healthier and now I can put uh, all of my travel places that I have seen, so like even the bell tower. Not that that's really travel, but I paint stuff like that. Whatever I see that I like, I put it into art. Um, basically, really pretty destinations inspire me. <laughs> that's great, there's great inspiration in travel. Jenny, one of your artworks in this exhibition was inspired by the exhibition title, Perseverance, Strength Through Art. Can you tell us about this painting and what it means to you? Um, when I saw the theme, Perseverance Through Art, I immediately thought of the strength and resilience that people with disabilities of all levels um, struggle with every day. And I came to mind of a photo that I had, which is of a tree, which you'll see up there. He's growing out of a very rocky outcrop, um, being blown back by the wind. And I just thought to myself, well, there's the perseverance, you know, the perseverance of the tree and relating that back to people and everybody who uh, has to struggle on a daily basis. Captured it brilliantly. Julianne, your art is very personal. Can you describe how much of yourself you give to your art? When I'm making my art, I'm not just um, depicting some things. So like I use nature a lot because that's where I feel a connection to and feel happy. But I also put all of my feelings and experiences of living with disability, chronic illness, any trials that I'm going through in life, they all get poured out into the work when I'm making it. So 
often there'll be changes in series. I remember doing a series when I was going through a really hard time and when I'd finished it, you could see the progression of everything that had happened throughout it and it was really quite um, beautifully sad and it still makes me sad looking at them but there's also, I like that I can change those hard things into something beautiful and I find that really helps me to process everything that's going on in my life as well. What a wonderful way to walk in someone else's shoes through art. Um, I'm going to open the discussion up now to the floor. So does anyone have any questions for our artists? Thank you. I think this is a question for Caroline. Uh, you mentioned about working with recycling and using materials. Is that, is that correct, if I got the right person? Thank you. And thank you. And just, um, I feel quite um, interested in that. I think some artists, installation artists, do use that sort of format and so on. Do you think that artists should generally be thinking more about using art as an expression about our environment and, and so on, and perhaps look at things like that? I mean, no art is personal, but I'd be interested in your views on that. Thank you. I think art is a personal thing. I also think art is a vehicle of expressing ideas around you and getting it through to people about things like climate change and environment and that. But that's just one vehicle of expression and I wouldn't be mutually exclusive in my thinking along those lines because everyone's different. Any other questions? Uh, I'm studying in the uh, type and I have a lecture as a coach and it's been really great like we have had all sorts of approaches to art and even the recycled stuff she's done a lot of that this year and it's um, uh, um, really good to be able to learn different approaches to art uh, throughout the whole year and uh, rather than doing it myself I think that I have learned way more this way. <laughs> My question is for Sandra. Sandra, your artwork appears um, very political and you have some amazing pieces. Can you talk to me a little bit about what your artwork means to you? Yes, um, my artwork can be very political because I feel that in this same day and age, even though we are disabled, we should be, be able to speak out about, about how the world is treating us. Is that okay? I think we're just about out of time. So I'd like to thank our four artists and, of course, Sandra, who was our guest panellist. Um, if you could give them a round of applause, that would be fabulous. Yeah, let's have all the artists up.
while our artists are standing there, I've got one final thought to leave you with. Art invokes our emotions, making us feel and think, and I hope that as you view the pieces on show tonight, you'll take the time to engage your emotions and reflect on the artwork on show. Thank you. Oh, well, that was pretty cool. <laughs> I think we enjoyed that. So just some final remarks for this evening. So first of all, um, on, again, on behalf of myself and on behalf of the team uh, at Mission Australia, we would like to thank um, everyone who has helped make this event a reality, in particular the amazing team at the city of Subiaco. Um, we came to them uh, six months ago with a half-baked idea about putting on a an art exhibition, and not only did they agree to help us, um, but they absolutely ran with it um, and have been tremendous partners. And I'd like to just acknowledge and, and express that to Council. You have an amazing administration. I'd like to thank our amazing uh, panel leader, uh, Sandy Parsons. So Sandy, thank you very much. Um, it's uh, uh, your example, again, is, is one of um, the tremendous talent that uh, we have in our community, not just those with, with disability. So it's, thank you very much for bringing the stories of our artists to life. Really appreciate that. Also, I'd like to thank and acknowledge um, Perth Expo Hire. So this event originally was set to run from the 3rd of December um, to the 6th of December. So it was going to be a four-day um, exhibition. Um, first of all, thank you to the generosity of the library staff, but then secondly to the team at Perth Expo Hire. We've been able to extend the exhibition from the 3rd of December until the 18th of December. Um, Perth Expo Hire have supplied the hanging equipment and the boards at no extra cost, um, and we are incredibly grateful for that. So um, for your, all your Expo Hire needs. Uh, <laughs> so I really appreciate, it. Uh, really, really appreciate um, them for that. Um, just a reminder that our artists are all wearing name tags this evening, so if you would like to um, have a chat with any of them about any of their artwork, um, you are more than welcome to, to do so. Um, I know, well, having spent a lot of time with Sandra, they're not short of a word, so um, more, than, uh, more than happy to chat to you about their artwork, so I really encourage you to engage in conversation. We'd also love you to eat the pizza. <laughs> uh, I only have a single door fridge. It, <laughs> It won't fit all in there. I will try, though. Um, but if you could eat the pizza, that would be great. Um, we also have, um, uh, you may have seen, we have a prize on offer this evening as well. And the prize will actually run um, throughout the course of the exhibition and be drawn on the 18th of December. That prize is the People's Choice Award. So everyone, hopefully, this evening has received a ballot paper. And everyone who visits the library over the course of the next two weeks will also receive a ballot paper. Um, that prize was a, a private donation from a local community member who has kindly um, purchased a $250 gift card to Jackson's Art Supply. Um, so make sure you get your, your votes in. Um, this, is, this evening's event will run until 7.30, um, and we are very lucky to have a photographer, photographer with us this evening. Um, so if you would like to have a, a picture taken in front of your artwork, or perhaps with your family and friends, make sure you see our, our friend there in the, uh, is that teal, aqua? It's a nice shirt. The fr our friend in the nice shirt, uh, before 7.30. Um, and again, just as a final thought before I sign off, Thank you very much to all of our artists um, and their families. Um, we um, were organised chaos, I think is the nicest way to put it. Um, and at every, every turn, they obliged and produced, I think we can all agree, some pretty stunning pieces of work. So thank you very much, everyone, and enjoy your evening. <laughs>